For some time I lived in the Middle East, many years ago before I ever came to Brisbane, and living in that world I learned what a solemn, indeed urgent obligation hospitality is in those cultures. What is true now in that part of the world was certainly true in the time of Jesus. Hospitality in the Middle East is not just important, it really is a matter of life and death. Because if you're in the desert, and there's a lot of desert in the Middle East, if you do not find hospitality, you die. If you find hospitality, you live. So that in the Bedouin cultures, for instance, the desert communities, it really does become a matter of life or death. But even in the towns and the cities, it is a solemn and urgent obligation. Which is why it is so extraordinary in the story that we have just heard that Simon the Pharisee, a man, it would seem, of substance, importance, fails so abysmally on the score of hospitality. We hear it from the lips of Jesus himself. You poured no water over my feet. The first and most basic task that hospitality required was to wash the feet of those who had been walking the dusty paths of the countryside. You gave me no kiss. Again, the kiss of welcome, recognising that you are, as it were, my flesh and blood, not my inferior, but my equal. I welcome you as one of my own. You gave me no kiss. You did not anoint my head with oil, and so on it goes. Simon has invited Jesus to dinner, but this is no welcome. This is no genuine act of hospitality. He's testing Jesus. He wants to see how he reacts to this woman who may well have been invited in at Simon's behest, just to see what Jesus would do. This is not the hospitable heart, it is the watchful eye, the eye of distrust. Contrast Simon's inhospitality, his abysmal failure at the point of welcome, with the astonishing and extravagant welcome that we see in Jesus. This is the hospitality of God. Jesus who allows the woman even to touch him, and they all remark upon it. Simon says, if he knew what kind of woman this was, he would not have allowed her to touch him. In that culture, for, the, for a woman to touch a man, or vice versa, was completely out of order. And here she is, she's got a bad name in town. He allows her to touch him. And then he forgives her. This is the hospitality of God that, as it were, goes way over the top. This is the welcome that far exceeds even the warmest of human welcomes, and it is the hospitality that gathers us here on this, the Lord's Day. This is an altar that will become a table, and the table is the table of the feast, where God provides an unbelievably hospitable welcome, providing us not just with bread and wine for the journey, but with bread and wine which are the body and blood of his son. What else could he give? He couldn't give anything more. This is the hospitality that gives everything not just water to wash the feet, not just the kiss or the oil to anoint the head, but the God who gives us everything. The World Youth Day pilgrims whom we commissioned today, and I have to say I'm one of them, kind of, they have a staff and I have a crozier. But they will go on a journey, and it is a journey into hospitality. First of all, they'll touch down at Santiago, where they will be welcomed by the Columban Fathers. And I'm delighted to welcome Father Dan Hardy, who is with us. Columban Father works in Chile and is here to speak to the pilgrims about what awaits them there. But one, I don't know Santiago, but I do know that our pilgrims there will receive an overwhelming welcome, the kind of welcome for which Latin America is renowned. Similarly, when they go on to Rio de Janeiro, they will again strike an extraordinary welcome. It's always like that with World Youth Day. But this is not just the welcome of Santiago and Rio de Janeiro. It is the welcome of God. 
It's into that hospitality that our pilgrims journey. And that's what we commission them to do here today. Not to be tourists, but to be pilgrims who go to the heart of the hospitality of God. And who, doing that, come back to us as those who can tell us more of what it means for us as the church in Brisbane to live and offer the hospitality of God. Because what else is the church if not a community gathered together by God in order to offer the welcome, the hospitality of God, particularly those who are most on the margin, most broken, most wounded, most rejected. That is what the church is. And we need these, our brothers and sisters, whom we commission as pilgrims today, to go into the hospitality of God, learn more of it, be touched more powerfully by it, so that you come back to us bearing the gifts of pilgrimage, gifts that can teach us more, all of us, more of the journey that we must take, all of us, not just a little pilgrimage to Rio de Janeiro, but the great journey of faith that we must take to the point where we become in the world the hospitality and the welcome of God. Yesterday, I went and had my injections. And looking at the list of things or the injections that you can or should have, I thought to myself, what a dangerous place it is, the world. There's so much that can go wrong, so many bugs out there ready to get you. But then I thought to myself, the one vaccination I didn't get from Dr. Deb and that she couldn't give me was the one that is most essential if we want to succeed on the pilgrimage of life, and that is the vaccination against the kind of inhospitality we see in Simon the Pharisee. I wish it were as simple as getting a jab, but it's not. All of us must go on this long journey of learning, learning what it is in a profoundly inhospitable world to live and embody the hospitality of God. To that hospitality we commend you pilgrims. Go into it to its very heart as you set forth on the great journey of faith and then come back to us as those who can give us a booster so that we may learn what it means to live the welcome of God, to be hospitable as the church is called to be. Amen.